Welcome to How To Tuesdays at Lori's Country Cottage. My name is Lisa, and today I'm going to teach you how to make quilt-as-you-go placemats. When we were in Houston, we found the June Taylor quilt-as-you-go sew-by-number products at a table. I think Barb saw the wine bottle holder first. I don't know why Barb is always making wine bottle holders, but she does, and we're thankful she found it because there are great products. I wanted to see how easy it was to make, so I made the Tory Tote. It was an amazingly fun afternoon project of just sitting and sewing and having fun. You know when you need to have a project where you can just sit and enjoy without too much thinking? This was the project and I made it in an afternoon. And I have to say, I enjoyed making the placemats just as much as I enjoyed making the bag. If you're not familiar with Quilt As You Go, Quilt, Quilt As You Go is a method where you sew your backing, your batting, and your quilt top together all at the same time. So when you're done stitching, all you need to do is bind your project. So let me show you how it's done. We are making today the Venice placemats. What you get in the, pro in the bag is a pre printed cotton foundation to make six placemats. All of the projects have the pre-printed foundation and they're numbered, so you sew them sequentially. The first thing I did was cut out my placemat about an inch away from the edge. Then I spray starched my fabric because we're on a cotton foundation, we can't iron as we go because it might shrink, stretch, or distort the foundation. So we're going to finger press and our spray. Here we are ready to start. Piece one is a square and I laid it on triangle number one. Then I took piece two laid it right sides together along the placement line. That's not a stitching line, that's a placement line. And also make sure to leave this nicely lined up on the edge or your seam allowances might show up in your next piece. So I stitched with a quarter inch seam allowance, finger pressed my piece, and now it's time to add piece three. I labeled all my pieces with sticky numbers so I wouldn't lose track. Piece three, gets laid on top, and again, lining up the edge nicely so my seam allowance doesn't show. Once I stitch that with a quarter inch seam allowance, I flip it open, and I continue building my braid until I'm done. Next step, my braid is done, and it's time to add my accent pieces. I couldn't decide which color to use, so I used one of each. Something to note, when you're done sewing your braid, you've actually covered this placement line that is here. So you take a ruler, draw your line, and lay your accent piece on top, and stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. You probably noticed that all my points are cut off. That's because my border piece is a light fabric. And if this red or blue were to move into this space, you'd be able to see that. So I've just taken a scissors and cut them off. There are my two accent pieces. Let's move on to the borders. There we go. Simply lay your border along the placement line and finger press out. Next piece, our nifty little cutlery pocket. To make the pocket, I've taken the pocket piece, folded it in half, wrong sides together, and I did a little top stitch. It doesn't call for that in the pattern, but I thought it was a nice little finish on that folded edge. Now this pocket piece is simply its own piece 
on the placemat. There it is. Lay it on the placement line, stitch my quarter inch, and voila, there's my placemat top. The next thing I did was to do a little bit of quilting on top. You don't have to, but I thought it was a nice little finish. I added a quilting line here, and a quilting line here, and one more here. If you have an embroidery machine, or you love to do applique, wouldn't it be fantastic to do initials or names or designs on your little pocket? A great way to personalize your placemats. Once my placemat top was finished and quilted, I trimmed on the cutting lines, and I actually used my seam line as a measuring line to make sure those edges were straight in case my cotton foundation was distorted somehow. Last step, binding. There's my finished placemat. All you need now is your cutlery, a cute little napkin, and there's a great little place setting to enjoy this summer. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make the Venice placemats today. As you can see, you need very little product. I used the 505 spray to attach my batting to my backing, the spray starch for my fabric. I chose to use yardage for my placemat from Sketchbook Garden. That's this amazing fabric here. You can also use jelly rolls with some yardage, enough to make your pockets. With my leftover scraps, I made this really neat water bottle shaped uh, cozy. Fun little project, it's got brown rice inside and I can put it in the freezer or in the microwave to warm it up. So June Taylor has several products that you can make in this same method. Here's our Venice placemat. She has wonderful mug, rat, mug mats that are fabulous. Work ahead and get some stockings done for your family. You won't regret the time you take. They go together so quickly. Here's the wine carrier that Barb first saw. And then some really neat things. This is an insulated grocery bag. So you get one foundation with a plastic insert. So it's a nice sturdy bag. And then if you love making bags like I do, this is a kit with three foundations. So you can make three bags with this one kit. That's it for today's How To Tuesdays. I hope you enjoy making some placemats. On Wednesday, join us for Hump Day Deals.